round of applause and let's welcome Aiden, the co-founder and CEO from Change Shape, come up to the stage. Hey everyone, how's it going? Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I don't see my notes, though, and I kind of need them. I haven't slept too much, and I'm jet lagged. <laughs> I mean, I can still do the talk without the notes, but it'll be better, I promise. <laughs> Cool. Okay, so we'll just start, and if we get it, can get it to work, we can get it to work. But if not, oh, yeah. If you just put it in presenter mode, no, no, go. C can I help? No, don't do that. No, you were good. Yeah, no, go, go back to Google, Google. Yeah, yeah, and then put it in presenter mode with notes, please. Did it again. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's okay. We'll, we'll forget about it. Um, cool. So, hey, everyone. My name is Aiden. I'm a co founder and CEO at Chainsafe. We got plenty here. Thanks, brother. Um, and at Chainsafe, we're a blockchain research and development firm that builds open source protocols and developer tools for people to build their dreams. And so, really, what that looks like is that. We help different Web3 ecosystems build and maintain core protocol implementations as well as libraries that help those people, uh, not the necessarily just those people, but developers in general, to be able to build whatever they need to build in native programming languages, hopefully making it a lot easier for people to get into our space. Um, so relevant to today, uh, is one of our libraries, Web3.Unity, which enables people in a completely open source way, in a, uh, in a provider-based model, to be able to build Unity applications targeting any currently EVM-based chain. But today I'm not gonna be talking about that. Today I'm gonna be talking about what I think is the most important piece to actually leading to mass adoption. Because, quite frankly, I believe the technology is here and we're ready to build the dreams that we all had 10 years ago when this space morphed into what we have today with Ethereum. And so the core of this really is the notion that the future of software is community driven. And what that means really within the open source context is that the cost of replication within open source is pretty low. It's as easy as copying and pasting. However, what you cannot copy and paste is community. You cannot copy and paste the actual intrinsic value that unifies a community into building a piece of software. And unfortunately in our space, as much as this might to this crowd sound like an obvious statement, it's become more and more normal for people to release BSL licensed code and pretend as if that's not the beginning of the end of what we are all here to really do, which is democratize access to the web by empowering people to be contribute to be owners of these protocols through their contributions. That is why we're here. That is why we do what we do. And I hope that we can all align together towards that mission and not continue to make these proprietary moats that are driving people away from our industry. And the unfortunate reality is that when you have someone on the outside looking in, what they're seeing doesn't look very good when what they see are these proprietary uh, alternatives to proprietary software, right? The point here is to do a lot more than just 10x. The point here is to do something completely different. And so, if there's one thing that I hope you take away from today's talk is this here. 
Um, and it's something that's really fascinating. So basically, the term DAO, right, decentralized autonomous organizations, where does it come from? Well, it comes from, you know, early descriptions of what it would look like in the future to have IoT devices interacting with one another. And then in 2013, Larimer came along and coined this term DAC, a decentralized autonomous corporation. Vitalik then saw that and reintroduced the term DAO that we know of as today with the definition of the DAC without the uh, share elements to uh, the kind of DAC model. And so what does that mean? Well, within this decentralized autonomous corporation, the idea was like a corporation to have people being able to buy and sell shares in a liquid way, right? But within a DAO, that was kind of seen as a way to maybe make it a little bit more generalized to allow for any type of organizational structure uh, to exist, which then has led, as we see today, to this incredible revolution in terms of how we coordinate ourselves. I feel like I'm an F1 driver. <laughs> um, so what I would like to ensure that people take away from this slide is that sustainability is number one within an organization, right? The ability to continue to persist. And with a DAC, that was a lot easier for people to understand, right? It's a decentralized autonomous corporation. You buy and sell things, and you know there's speculation involved. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty honest. But with DAOs, that becomes a little bit more complicated, especially when we are trying to create things that are more utility-driven and less speculation-driven. And balancing those two things can be very complicated. However, I hope that you all take away again that sustainability here is key. The idea here is to ensure that these systems can live way beyond our lifetimes. And if you don't see the value in that, you're probably not cut out for Web3. So one of the things I'm incredibly proud of is when we started our journey, we were just a bunch of people going to Ethereum developer meetups. One of my co-founders here today. Um, we met at a meetup. We just wanted to build really cool things and were really proud of where the technology was at at the time. However, when we went to build things, we realized, oh my god, we can't build anything with this stuff. It's pretty useless. <laughs> Um, and this is, you know, 2014, 2015, 2016. And then we realized, oh my God, open source developer tools are the real missing piece here, right? The ability for someone to leverage some piece of code to be able to help them expedite the way in which they're then able to implement their dreams was, for us, our dream. However, we never forgot our roots of people who wanted to build cool things and wanted to build cool things, more importantly, that made a huge impact. And so Lodestar, our Ethereum consensus client written in TypeScript, uh, is a piece of software that leverages a whole bunch of different utilities. And what I would like to talk about is kind of how these open source primitives lead into each other and then lead into something even greater than we could have ever imagined when we started building Lodestar. And so one of the incredible people behind Zipline sitting here today, um, you know, has leveraged uh, these libraries that we started building without any intention for them to be involved in interoperability. Not thinking that it couldn't be, but not necessarily realizing that we would be the ones to do it. Um, and so Zipline is an optimistic way of bridging. Um, and the really cool thing is then we're then able to leverage that within Sigma, which is a interoperability protocol that we're incredibly proud to be contributing to. And with that, Sorry, this isn't the most pretty slide. 
but <laughs> it does the job. Um, where Sigma is really made up of these three components, an MPC-based approach, an optimistic approach, as well as a ZK-like client-based approach. The goal being to enable people to leverage whatever they need to be able to do what they want to do. But wait a second. I thought my talk was about community-based software development. <laughs> and so why am I bringing this up? Well. It's really cool to think about kind of the tech behind these protocols is really important, but at the end of the day, like I said, the cost of replication is zero, right? I can go and copy and paste anything and then just deploy it. Um, but what enables for all three of those components to become Sigma? And that's really how we aim to bring that community together through not just extrinsic motivations, but through intrinsic factors as well in a sustainable way with the intent of ensuring that contributors are the ones making the decisions, that contributors are the ones who are gaining the value, right? We see all of these really exciting airdrops happening. However, that's just a drop in the bucket, right? That's not sustainable. We want to see things more like retroactive public goods funding and things of that nature where we're thinking in longer terms about how we aim to bring sustainability to this incredibly unsustainable world. And with that, we have to also appreciate again, and I, I don't mean to say the word, word open source a million times. I'm, I mean, I do, <laughs> but I would like to not have to because within Web3, once upon a time, it was assumed that things were open source, but no longer is that the case. And it's really important to remember that not, open, not all open source is equal, right? BSL does not equal MIT, does not equal LGPL. And it's really important when you are thinking about your community to also make sure that you're licensing what you're building in a way that empowers your community to truly be owners of that thing. But open source, like everything in life, is not perfect. And one of the major issues in traditional open source is sustainability. Um, open source right now is mostly driven, especially the most kind of highly used and I don't just mean kind of a, a library here and there, but you know things like operating systems and the like are supported not just financially by big companies, but also by engineers and human beings at these companies. And it's important to appreciate that it's really intrinsic value, uh, uh, intrinsic motivations, and intrinsic values that are aligning those people within those communities. However, we want to make sure that there's also an ability for extrinsic value to be accrued by these contributors, which is really where we aim to move things forward with Web3, right? It's not just about building open source decentralized things, but it's also about making sure that those things can outlive us all. And really that brings us to principle defined projects, right? What brings people together? And it's a set of values, a set of principles that ensure that we all are in agreement as to why we do what we do. And it doesn't have to be completely aligned, right? We want certain, uh, sorry, it, it should be aligned, but we don't all have to be saying the same things, right? Alignment looks very different for different people. However, at the end of the day, we should be trying to meet in the middle to ensure that we all understand what we're looking to take out of this all. Was that one minute? Damn, that was quick. Um, <laughs> So let me move forward a little bit to the way forward. <laughs> so if we want to hold, uh, we want to solve this issue, we need to be honest. We need to be honest that having 40% of all the tokens of a project minted at Genesis for the rest of time is not sustainable. There's nothing there ensuring that 100 years from now, you'll still be able to persist that, uh, that piece of code. And so how do we do things differently? Well, in going back to the model of a DAC, some of the takeaways from that that we can learn from 
are really around sustainability and ensuring that we're building these things that actually are able to fund themselves and not just rely on this notion that one, one day the price will go up so much so that, that those 40% of tokens somehow go up magically to a point where we don't have to worry about those types of things. However, that's not reality, right? In reality, we need to build things that are able to sustain themselves by making money. I know, it sounds super evil, but that is what we need to do to ensure that these things can outlive us all. And the question becomes, are you trying to build a piece of software that'll be here to create impact forever? Or are you trying to extract as much value as possible in the short term? That's a really serious question you should be asking yourself. Um, if you're looking to chat with us, if you're looking to connect, please check us out on Twitter. Check out our website, of course. And if you want to learn more about Sigma and how you can get involved, check out buildwithsigma.io. We're incredibly proud of the partnerships and how we view kind of this world evolving. And we hope that you know that together we can take what we have as a community and do so much more than any of us could have ever imagined by actually thinking in positive sum terms rather than an extractive, an extractive terms. So yeah, thank you so much. And thank you to the IOSG for always having such incredible events and for bringing us out here. Um, it's been such a pleasure to see so many great old friends. <laughs>